It seems to be framed in things such as uh, meddling in elections, possibly espionage, you know, some mischievous acts that do disrupt but don't cause severe harm. But what sort of things could cyber warfare be used to do? How far can it be pushed? It can be pushed quite away, but it's very unlikely to happen because of the consequences of doing that. So most likely we'll see more of what we've already seen, the sort of denial of service tax that we're seeing in Norway and that we've seen in Lithuania, uh, huge misinformation and disinformation campaigns, and we're seeing those happen both inside and outside Russia. And all of the normal cyber criminal activity that goes on, that's getting louder and more prominent, but it's not organised, it's not a military attack, it is purely opportunistic criminality which is originating as it has done for years in Russia. In terms of when you talk about sort of military level cyber attack, is this the sort of thing that could penetrate and disrupt major infrastructure systems, for example? So we have seen that happen, and we did see it happen in Ukraine uh, some years ago with attacks on the national grid. Potentially, it's possible. However, the Ukrainian national grid at the time was not particularly secure. It was using old hardware. It was not kept up to date. And so it was more vulnerable to these attacks than many other more developed nations are. And on top of that, there's been time since then to continue working on and improving critical national infrastructure and securing it. So it's possible, it's extremely unlikely, not only because there's been more effort put into security of these critical systems, but also because it would be a level of escalation which no one really wants to see. My suspicion is when it comes to using cyber warfare, there are two different tiers to this, one being what we have just discussed there and having to create robust defences to protect critical infrastructure from being shut down or manipulated. But then the other is on the, the, the misinformation level and manipulating the public into believing certain things or acting in a certain way. How much does do countries such as Russia have a pernicious influence when it comes to trying to divide our society through use of things like bots as well? It really can't be overstated. So Russia is famously has uh, troll farms or troll factories where they will have people sitting there making posts on social media, amplifying particular things and trying to spread simply disruption, chaos and disinformation. So it's conspiracy theories and encouragement of those. Not all that they've generated these stories is that they are helping to spread and amplify and support them to cause more societal chaos. And how protected are we from that? I mean, I'm reassured to hear that uh, it sounds as if we're relatively capable of defending ourselves from a particularly harmful attack on military scale. But when it comes to this amplification of social tensions and the influence that social media is increasingly having, have we got enough protections in place to deal with that? Uh, frankly, no. There was an incident a few years ago with a 5G tower being burned down and engineers working on them being attacked. And that was due to the spread of the 5G conspiracy theories. And those were amplified by these elements who like to go out and step up the stories and caused what we have to call domestic terrorism in this country through radicalisation to believe a conspiracy theory. There has been much talk of increasing our defence budget spending today from 2.3% to 2.5%. And criticism that perhaps in times past we had deployed too much of that budget towards things such as cyber protection rather than conventional arms systems. But would we be making a big mistake if we were to become complacent in this area? We definitely can't afford to become complacent but it's not due to a lack of investment in the technology. It's due to a lack of investment in and skill building in the people. There, there simply aren't enough good people available to do all the work that needs to be done. And in many companies, in many organisations, there isn't the investment to bring the people who could do the work on board. So we really can't afford to become complacent. There is a huge problem here. It's just not down to a lack of investment in technology.